Alright, a couple of months ago I posted a video on replacing the exhaust uh, camshaft position sensor on this 2016 Chevy Equinox. And I had a few people reach out to me on my Facebook page actually. And uh, they asked if I could post a video on cleaning and or replacing the VVT solenoids or the variable valve timing solenoids on this vehicle. Um, it's a good first step before jumping into buying the CPS uh, because it doesn't cost you any money and they're actually a little bit easier to get to. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, in my case, uh, replacing the uh, camshaft position sensor did clear the code, but apparently in some cases uh, it's actually uh, dirty or bad VVT solenoids. So we're going to run through that process here today and uh, certainly leave questions or comments down below if you have them. And if you're not a subscriber and you want to see more of this type of stuff, hit that subscribe button. All right, let's get started. All right, and we have Mr. Connor out in the garage with us today and he'll be assisting with the process. He's always a good helper out in the garage. All right, so uh, I covered uh, the exhaust camshaft position sensor uh, replacement a couple of months ago. Um, and this one's actually going to be a little bit easier. Uh, what we need to do first is loosen up a clamp that actually resides right down there. We've got this clamp here to loosen. And then we've got this little uh, intake tube here to remove. Okay, let me grab my tripod. All right, showing the removal of this clamp is kind of tough because the camera doesn't really fit down in there. But the, uh, the loosening screw for it is right there. Let's see if I can zoom in and you'll be able to see that at least. Okay, so we're just going to take a uh, flat screwdriver and loosen that up. Okay, we've got this clamp here. And again, it's not necessary to remove these clamps. We're just going to loosen them up. Just give that a wiggle. And then we've got this here. I'm just going to grab a hold of it and kind of give this a gentle tug. That'll come right out. All right. Now at this point, we can actually just kind of lift this right up out of the way. Okay. It's going to have a little bit of um, tension from some sort of rubber grommets on the back here. I'll show you what I mean. Now at this point I'm just going to take a clean rag and just kind of cover our intake here, throttle body. We're going to remove our oil fill cap here. Now we're going to do the same thing with this, uh, this piece here. We're just going to pull up on it. Back rear right corner, rear left corner, and then the front left corner also. Go ahead and put this back on here so we don't get any dirt or debris down in there. All right, at this point you're going to want to pay attention to the color of the wires. So we have the purple and black up front and green and black in the back here. I'm going to use a little a pick like this. This is a Tecton. Incidentally, I'll link to all the tools as well as the uh, new VVT uh, solenoids down below in case you don't want to clean them and you just want to buy them outright. And what we're going to do is push it on a little tab here. I'm going to try to show you. Okay, that just pushes in and we're going to remove this little clip. Just like that. Okay, set that aside and don't lose it. At this point, we can squeeze in on this little thumb tab here and lift up. Okay, we'll just set that aside and do the same to the back one. Okay, you can also see that they are color-coded. So we have the gray in the front and black in the back. They're actually two different part numbers. Um, so they look very similar, but there is a difference, okay? We're going to take a 10 millimeter, and let me get a shot of that bolt real quick. All right, so we have two uh, 10 millimeter bolts we need to remove, one for each solenoid here. And I'm just using a 3 8 inch drive ratchet and an extension. And get that one out of there and we'll get we'll remove the next. OK, 
Okay, at this point, I'm just going to take some uh, some channel lock pliers and gently give them a little wiggle here. That one's already pretty loose. This one here, I haven't moved yet. And I'm not squeezing. I'm just kind of using the channel locks for leverage, more or less. Okay, I'm just going to set that on a rag while I get the other one out. Okay, and again, I'm just going to take a rag and kind of stuff it in each hole here. I'm going to want to clean up around each hole before we put the uh, cleaned... VVT solenoids back in or new ones depending on what you're doing here But I'm just going to try not to allow any of the debris that may be around those holes to Get pulled in with the loose oil that came out of the uh, solenoids. All right, let's go ahead and get them cleaned up All right, so for the uh, process of cleaning the VVT solenoids, we're going to use throttle body cleaner It's designed to be used on electronics uh, versus a carburetor cleaner uh, Which may have an adverse reaction to some of the electronics in the solenoids. Okay, I'm gonna set one aside. I'm only gonna show you one because the process is the same for both. You're gonna to need to pick a toothpick or something works just as well uh, because we're gonna to wanna to pull this O-ring off again just to make sure that we don't have any adverse uh, reactions to the cleaner. Gently, carefully. Okay, a toothpick, a toothpick works just as well, all right? I'm gonna set that aside here. Uh, we wanna make sure we don't get any um, throttle body cleaner on that. It'll probably be fine, but I've had um, with O-rings, I've had with other cleaners, say like uh, carburetor cleaner, I've had them elongate. Uh, so what ends up happening is there's an adverse reaction. The rubber kind of stretches out and the uh, O-ring is no longer uh, fits, but it seems to go back to place after, after it dries out, but we don't want to take any chances. So I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to move this one out of the way as well. All right, so process is pretty straightforward. We're going to take our throttle body cleaner and uh, clean all up in there. See these screen meshes here? You want to clean those off real well as also. And you want to use like a lint-free rag, um, like a t-shirt material works pretty well. Okay, so I'm going to let that one set while I clean the other one. Um, with the throttle body cleaner in it, okay? Okay, so once the uh, solenoids are dry, you wanna put your uh, O-ring back on, and you can use uh, compressed air, like hit it with your air compressor or a can of compressed air to dry it off a little bit quicker. Um, and again, you can use a toothpick or a pick like this uh, to help get it on there. Big thing is when you get it in place here at the top, you want to make sure that it's not rolled. And one way to do that is to make sure that it kind of moves freely. Okay, so just kind of move around. And I do want to show that there's a like a bushing in there. It just sort of, let's see if I can pop it out. You want to make sure you don't lose that. You want that in there. Um, and that's going to help. Uh, in the installation because I'm actually going to leave the bolt in place, okay? So then I can just kind of install it like that. But you want to make sure you don't pop that out of there. Um, you want that. All right, let's go get it installed. All right, so I've cleaned the, the dirt and debris out from around the hole as much as possible. Um, one thing I probably would have done before I started maybe was, was uh, taking like my... Uh, my air compressor and then hit that just to get all the loose particles out of there, but uh, I think we're good. All right, I'm just starting with the bolts in the holes already. Just to make the job a little easier as far as getting them down in there. And I did put a little bit of oil around the O-ring as well. Clean oil, that is.
And you don't want to go animal with these. I don't have the torque spec, but uh, you want to tighten them down so they won't fall out. But you don't want to break anything. Snug and then some. All right, green and black in the back here for the exhaust side. Purple and black up front for the uh, intake side. Little retention clips just slide in. Okay, and we put it back together. Okay, so on the back of this, you can see we have these sort of rubber grommets. They're gonna line up with these posts. Okay, you've got one here, one here, one up front here. Probably can't see it because it's out of frame, but. And take our oil filled cap off temporarily. Just like that. Put the oil cap back on. Okay, same deal here. Sort of rubber grommets fit over these posts back here to remove our rag. Incidentally, now would be a good time to clean your throttle body if you wanted to do that. And last thing we need to do is make sure that we're sitting down over the intake and tighten up our two clamps, okay? Hopefully you found this video helpful. Give me that thumbs up if you did find it helpful. And if you want to see more of this type of stuff and you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button for me, okay? Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day. Leave questions and comments below and take care of yourself. Bye now.